Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to teach you guys how to build a glitch buster and why you actually need one or may need one. Well, we upgraded the servos in my wife's Traxxas Summit from the stock 9 kilogram ones to a pair of SP, S, what is it, SPT or STP? Yes, SPT, SPT Racing 25 kilogram servos. Now they chew up about 1.2 amps each and there's a lot of mixed information on the internet as far as the EVX2 ESC, whether it's a one amp or a two and a half amp, but I tried installing a BEC, actually two different types. One was a seven amp, um, just a below six volts, uh, not by much. And the other one was a three amp at uh, six volt, because I can switch it between six and five. Anyway, either way, Either one of those were really screwing up the system big time. Uh, the servos just by themselves into the truck with the stock ESC setup, still glitching out, browning out. So when you're looking at brownouts, it's when your receiver goes on and off bind. Uh, it could be from hitting the throttle, it could be steering. In this case, steering was causing it. Um, and uh, the, the BEX just seemed to make things worse. And I figured out the right wires to go on the EVX2 to get my 16 volt input, um, but it was still causing more grief because you have to have an actual open channel on your receiver. And this 110 Summit doesn't have any of those. All it has extra is a RPM port and a uh, telemetry port. And neither one of those are suitable because they make the truck do some really funky stuff. Uh, so anyways, um, I was talking to Great Hobbies in Edmonton, and um, we were, he was trying to help me walk through a bunch of different things to try, and nothing was working for us. I was switching BECs while I was on the phone with them, and doing this and that, and I uh, tried running a Y adapter, because uh, what, you, you, what you have to do is you have to actually um, bypass the uh, red wire, so you got to disconnect the red wire uh, out of the plug on your stock ESC uh, if you're going to use a BEC, okay? Otherwise you can cook stuff. So yeah, I already knew that because I already did three trucks already yesterday and we were just going to do hers today and this has been an all day thing since 8 a.m. and uh, it's now like going on 5 o'clock. But anyways, um, so we were going back and forth. We couldn't figure out what was causing it. And I ended up with some radio issues. Oh, everything went squirrely. I just, it drove me bananas, right? So uh, I said, well, can I take two, two of my three amp backs and tie them together into a Y adapter to get me six amps and get exactly six volts? So of course he talked to one of the techs there and the tech said, nope, don't even think about it because yeah, things are going to go real bad. So I thought, all right, that's not going to work. So next, so we're talking about glitch busters and that brings us to this video. Now a glitch buster, all it is, is a capacitor. It's uh, electrolytic. It uh, has a positive and a negative and you need a servo cable or a servo extension cable and chop the one end off like we're doing here. Uh, this is just one I chopped off of a servo or something a while back. Anyway, so we need positive and negative, red and black. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually solder this onto the capacitor's red and black areas. And uh, now you can buy a glitch buster if you want. Uh, to buy the parts is probably going to cost you just about as much, but if you've got servo wires kicking around, that can be the freebie part, especially from dead servos. I always save the servo wire from a dead servo. Um, but um, the capacitor is about the only thing that's going to cost you, and then you probably pick this up for, I don't know, a dollar. You know, you get them cheap, you know, like they're, they're not that expensive. Now, here's the thing. Your glitch buster capacitor must be a minimum of 2200 microfarad. Okay, so 2200 microfarad and a minimum of 10 volts. Okay, um, if you're under on the voltage, it, can, it won't work. If you're definitely under on the microfarads, it won't work. Which I found out because I actually had um, 
tried it first with a thousand microfarad at 10 volt and uh, an old that was 35 volt at a thousand microfarad did not work at all and uh, so I was like okay so let's try the 3300 because even the guy there said you know you can go higher just don't go lower and uh, so I had to find out either way if you could actually really go lower you know I gotta know right so but uh, anyways you definitely can't go lower than 2200 microfarad but you can definitely be over so anyways um, so I built one and I installed it into the RPM port which is where the tech had suggested to put it in the 110 summit and uh, now we have no more brownouts everything's cool uh, we also just installed a brand new motor in her summit today too which is awesome but there's no more brownouts, no more glitching with the steering, uh, all the electronics are running fine. The only issue we seem to be having is with the LEDs, but I don't even remember if that issue was there before we even changed out the servos from the stock ones. Because her stock ones were getting a little aged and it was time for replacements. So we figured, well, upgrade, you know, get something stronger anyhow, because nine kilogram servos are a joke. Um, in the summit. Well, they're actually a joke in just about any RSD, to be honest. Um, you should actually have 15 or better. But, um, anyways, so soldering paste, solder, you know, the usual deal here. Um, pair of pliers if you don't uh, have an extra set of helping hands, and mine are kind of busy right now. So, now the uh, polarity on the bat, on the capacitor, this side where the stripe is, that's going to be your negative and where it's all black, it's gonna be positive. One lead is longer than the other. Uh, generally, I cut my leads a little shorter though, just because I needed them shorter. So we're gonna turn this on its side like so. This just makes it easier for soldering. Get a Q-tip, run some soldering paste over top, and uh, then we're gonna start soldering away. You don't want to be too skimpy with the solder and try not to keep the heat on for too, too long. You should be able to get that pretty much instantly on the first shot. Now I'm going to pick up the parts to actually build more of these things. Um, because apparently these are good too if you've got motor cogging issues. Um, you can plug it in for just even that purpose. Um, what truth there is to that, I have no idea. However, some people say it does actually fix motor cogging issues, um, is to just put a glitch buster in. And of course, to keep everything straight, I've used red and black. So now we're going to heat up the shrink tubing, because we don't want anything shorting. And that's how easy it is to build a glitch buster, guys. That's simple. Too easy. Voila. So now we got a glitch buster. Now I went with a long wire, and I'll tell you why. You don't know how much space you got. Um, if you're running uh, in a Troxus machine, uh, Troxuses have the, the water, the, the receiver boxes and you gotta fish it through and all this and this gives you extra length so then you can just you know take some sticky tape or you can actually use a tie strap and hook it to another cable somewhere in your truck and let that dangle it doesn't matter it doesn't do anything so uh, but make sure you heat shrink tube the contacts because you don't want anything shorting if you don't have shrink tube use electrical tape that'll work for you or even uh, coat it in hot glue that actually works awesome as well um, but that's how easy it is to uh, build yourself a glitch buster and it will solve the problems uh, especially in the summit because we were getting really bad brownouts even with a stock setup it was kicking everything on and off and it's like ah, gotta stop this so bingo that's it that's all make sure when you install the plug that your black wire goes to the black side where it should because that's your negative and red to the red and it will work so it's working great in her summit so uh, I definitely swear by a glitch buster over a beck in this case because 
um, even with all the videos on YouTube um, where uh, guys are talking about using Bex in their summits, nobody's saying where they're plugging the actual Bex wire into, into the receiver. And I haven't gotten, been able to get an answer out of anybody either, so it must be some deep dark web secret or something, I don't mm -hmm. know. But nobody wants to talk, so it's like, whatever. And uh, I thought maybe Great Hobbies would know, but I guess they don't, because uh, none of them knew. Uh, where to actually plug the Beck wire into. Otherwise, we could have maybe just had a Beck, but it seems that every port we've tried doesn't work because none of them are technically open ports. Um, if I could do without all the extra micro servos, maybe it would be fine. I don't know. Um, now, the Becks that we installed, the 7 amp Becks we installed in the other vehicles, it straightened them all right out, no problems. And we weren't having brownouts. Um, we were just having lighting glitch problems with some of the lighting systems we just put in. And um, but it also helps the servo at the same time, um, you know. And we did use the same servos actually in our Red Cat Gen 8s, my TRX4, my HSP crawler, and I'm about to put two more of these servos actually into some other vehicles because uh, I love these servos. They're great, but I'm going to have to. If I get any glitches, I'm going to have to use a glitch buster or a Beck, one of the two. And uh, in the TRX4, I actually had to use the Beck um, because the Beck built into the TRX4 is only, in fact, one amp. And that is not enough to power that servo for long without a blowout. So I figured, well, better be safe than sorry. So I did that and put that together. And um, it's running on a 7 amp back and it runs great it's just the summit seems to be the issue um, I don't know um, the, the TRX probably has no issue even though it has all the same features as the summit mine does I have the tactical version so four channel right um, <coughs> I wasn't getting servo glitch problems um, I do seem to have some good amperage there but um, I wanted to just play it safe and I was getting lighting issues and it did solve that. So I might actually use this glitch buster in there too, just as an extra, you know, give it a little bit of extra boost, you know, um, because I'd like to keep my TRX4 running for a long, 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 long time. Um, so don't want any issues at all. And we'll see how a, actually a glitch buster and a BEC get along. That'll be interesting. So I'll update you on that if uh, there's any problems. If there isn't, well, then you can just assume that, you know, they do coexist together fine. Um, but if I do have a problem, then you will definitely know about it either way. So anyhow, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the little chat. Um, thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit while we're building this thing to let you know why you would actually need a glitch buster, what it can benefit for you for, uh, etc. And uh, so just keep that in mind if you do have a Summit, even a Revo uh, that's 110 and you're getting glitch outs or brown outs uh, as soon as you've upgraded to a 15 kilogram or larger servo, that would be why you need to install a glitch buster. Now, as far as Savox servos go, um, I talked to Great Hobbies just as a side note. And um, he was looking up a 25 kilogram saw box. I don't know what model, but um, apparently the 25 kilogram saw box he looked up chews up four amps to itself. So you absolutely cannot use that servo in any RC without a Beck, okay? Unless your built in Beck's got like 10 amps to feed the system kind of thing, um, especially in dual servo situations. You know, four amps a piece, you better have a really good quality and, you know, good back. And that's going to cost you some bucks, so keep that in mind, too. Um, I'm not a real huge fan of Savox myself, but um, I've had a little bit of experience with their servos, and I think they suck, but that's my opinion. And the opinion of the owner of the rig that bought the thing, because it was recommended. And uh, he didn't care for it much either. But... Um, Anyways, there you go. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.